Hi folks, now I know I've spoken about um, gyroscopes in previous videos uh, but I do find them quite fascinating and they have two main sort of um, phenomena um, and that, that is precession and rigidity in space and although the precessional properties um, like you see in demonstrated here um, are fascinating it's the rigidity in space element of them that um, I'm going to investigate in this video. So I just want to show now a video from 1960 and it was a demonstrational video um, published by the United States Navy um, for training in instrument um, navigation. So I'm going to play that for you now, just take a look. Modern high-performance aircraft require electric gyroscopic instruments. The turn and slip indicator, the attitude indicator, and the directional gyro. These electric instruments are dependable at extremely low pressures and temperatures, where gyro suction instruments are unreliable. This film will explain the theory of operation of some of the newer electric gyroscopic instruments. To understand any gyroscopic instrument, you must understand the principle of the gyroscope. It consists of a rotor mounted in a gimbal. The rotor can spin in one plane only. When another gimbal is added, a second plane of movement is possible. And when this assembly is mounted in bearings, the rotor has three planes of movement and can assume any possible attitude. This is now a freely mounted gyroscope. A spinning gyro has two important properties, precession and rigidity in space. All of its practical applications are based on these two properties. As for rigidity in space, the spinning rotor remains in its original attitude, while the gimbal and base move around it. In other words, the gyro maintains its axis in relation to space and not to the surface of the Earth. If a gyro moves around the Earth, its axis is vertical to the Earth's surface here, at an angle here, and horizontal here. Let's just replay that part and let it really sink in what he's saying. If a gyro moves around the Earth, its axis is vertical to the Earth's surface here, at an angle here, and horizontal here. So in the absence of any correcting or compensating force, the gyro will maintain its position in space no matter whereabouts on the Earth it is. And that includes when the gyro is moving on the Earth. The video then goes on to explain some of the processional properties of the gyroscope and some of the disadvantages that it presents um, for navigation but we're not really interested in that for this video um, so I'm going to skip to the, the disadvantages um, of the rigidity in space properties of the gyro. I'll link to the um, entire video in the description. Another disadvantage comes from the gyro's tendency to drift away from its original attitude. There are two types of drift. One is mechanical due to friction in the bearings. This is actually a form of precession. The other type, known as apparent drift, relates to rigidity in space. Once again, consider this condition. The gyro maintains its attitude while the Earth turns under it. 
Every six hours, the gyro drifts through 90 degrees in relation to the Earth's surface. So if you spin up a gyro, then what this video is saying is that six hours later, um, you will perceive the gyro to have rotated 90 degrees, although it hasn't. Um, it's maintained its rigidity in space. Moreover, you as the observer have um, rotated through 90 degrees um, during them six hours due to the rotation of the Earth. So let's see how this is overcome for navigational purposes. In order for the gyro instrument to be dependable, drift must be corrected continuously. There are several types of erection systems that correct for drift. The principle back of all these systems is based on three steps. The direction and degree of drift are measured by electrical or mechanical sensing elements. These elements then control the application of a proper force to the gyro, and it precesses back to its normal attitude. So doing a bit more research, uh, I found this article on a website called theairlinepilots.com and this is a website dedicated to airline pilots who want to discuss anything air, um, aviation related. Um, so this article reads, real wonder, this would be the processional wonder. Uh, whenever the gyro spin axis moves away from its initial defined orientation in space, the gyro is said to suffer from real wonder. Real wonder can be deliberately induced by implying, applying an external correcting force, exam example alignment of tied gyros. Real wonder can be caused by imperfections in the gyroscope, unbalanced gimbals or bearing friction. A perfect gyro with no external forces acting on it will suffer from real wonder. So apparent wonder, which is uh, the same as apparent drift. Having said that perfect gyros do not suffer from real wonder, there are many occasions when they appear to. This is because our orientation in space has, has changed while the gyro's orientation has not. This is apparent wonder. A horizontal gyro at the equator with its axis aligned to the local meridian shows no apparent drift as it is carried round on the rotating earth. So what it's saying is this is the side view of, an earth, of the earth with North Pole at the top and the equator across the middle. Um, if you spin up a horizontal gyro at the equator then um, you will not experience any drift since the axis of the globe there is aligned with the axis of the gyro. However if you go to the North Pole, so this is looking down uh, plan view on the globe, so the North Pole is in the centre and the equator is around the edge. Um, because the axis of the gyro is perpendicular to the rotational axis of the earth which is in the center here coming towards you um, when the earth's rotating this way round from an observer stood somewhere near the north pole looking at this gyro it would appear to rotate so a horizontal gyro at the North Pole shows an apparent drift of 15 degrees per hour as the Earth rotates under it. Now the apparent drift, uh, which is zero at the equator and 15 degrees per hour at the poles, is a function of latitude. So the mathematical equation to work it out is uh, 15 times the sine of your latitude uh, in degrees per hour. Now conversely, a vertical gyroscope um, acts exactly opposite. Um, so the mathematical equation for that would be um, 15 times cos of the latitude uh, in degrees per hour. So naturally I um, tried to find some videos or some um, documented experiments done by universities and whatnot um, that show this effect, you know, the rigidity in space effect um, over a extended period of time but I couldn't find anything nothing at all no experiments no videos and it's quite surprising really because the Navy video was um, first broadcast in 1960 and it seems to me that since then 
um, and feel free to correct me on this if you can find anything yourself by researching it but um, since 1960 at least it, it seems that it's just been accepted as fact without any actual proof um, so I'm going to try and plug the gap and do the experiment myself I don't know what's going to happen um, but I think it's important that the experiment is done and documented to either discount it or prove it so in theory after a certain period of time depending on your latitude on the earth and um, the gyroscope should appear to, to rotate uh, and then after 24 hours it should return to its original position um, however and whilst doing the research on this I, I found out that after 90 degrees of rotation on the gyroscope it will tumble and sort of go out of control so I think at least an extended period of time a couple of hours should um, give us enough information to determine what if it is actually moving or not so yeah bear with me um, I've got to try and source a powered gyro um, give me a couple of weeks and I'll do some testing and publish some results. Thanks for watching.